Are you experiencing ongoing health issues, things that just can't seem to be resolved? Autoimmune disease, chronic gut issues, maybe things like neurodegenerative disease, and you just can't find the answers for them. Maybe you've experienced trauma as a child or as an adult, and you know that it might be affecting your body physically, but you're just not sure how. Well, today we're going to talk about the biology of trauma, so how trauma can affect our physiology. Hi, I'm Dr. Ariane Messimer. I'm a functional medicine practitioner, doctor of physical therapy, registered dietitian, and I am the owner of The Movement Paradigm. I am super passionate about helping people get to the underlying causes of their illness and helping people live their best life. So why I'm so interested in trauma is that I personally have experienced a fair amount of trauma in my life, just like so many of us have. And one of the things that I've learned is how movement has changed and healed my body. And understanding the science of why movement is so powerful in healing and being able to discharge energy is so important. And also understanding how without addressing repressed and suppressed emotions and trauma that it can result in physical issues such as cancer, such as other chronic health conditions. So I think it's always helpful to start with the polyvagal theory. So this is by Dr. Stephen Porges, and it really gives us a great visual representation of our nervous system. And so as we're thinking of the three aspects of our responses to our nervous system, we have our state of social engagement. I like to refer to that as our state of safety, our state of connection, our ability to relate. So that is where we can connect to ourselves. We can connect to the greater world. We can be compassionate. We could be grounded. We can be mindful. And from a physiological state, this is where we're able to rest and digest. This is where we are able to have optimal immunity and motility and digestion in our gut. When we think about our fight or flight, which so many of us are familiar with, think of that as our survival mechanism. So when we are in a fight or flight, we are primed to survive. So we have blood flow that's rushing to the extremities. Our pupils are dilating. Our blood pressure is elevating. Our heart rate's elevating. We we are going to fight or we are going to flight. So we are going to survive here. And then we also have our free state. And so this is also referred to as the dorsal vagal state, where the state of social engagement is referred to as the ventral vagal state. In this free state, we can become overwhelmed. We can become disconnected. We can become shut down, even suicidal. From a physiological standpoint, think about it's our emergency state. So our body does not know what else to do and it just can't do anymore. And this is where we think about trauma. Because when we are in a fight or flight state, think we are activating what's called the HPA axis, our hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. That's our stress pathway in our body. That's when we have cortisol released. We have adrenaline that's released because in that state, it's actually meant to protect us. So it's not a bad state as we often think. But when we have adrenaline that's, that's pumping right, and we're ready to go, then think about if that's happening for a really long time and think about we have all of these stressors that just keep coming at us, keep coming at us. And all of a sudden we just, we just can't do it anymore. We haven't dealt with these things. We can't, we can't, we can't even, you know, process these things. And also think about when we don't have enough in the tank to be able to keep going. So we don't have enough nutrients because our, our tissues have been damaged because of all of this cortisol and adrenaline that's pumping all the time. So we don't have enough. We're depleted. Either of these two cases, we are going to move into a freeze state. And again, that is our dorsal vagal response. That is our emergency state. That is essentially when physical things start to happen. And so that is where we might have a new diagnosis of an autoimmune disease. That's where we might begin to have dysautonomia, a dysregulation of our nervous system. So heart rate fluctuations, either bradycardia, low heart rate, tachycardia, high heart rate. We could also feel, let's say, dizziness. We could feel blood pressure dysregulation. 
So we can have all of those symptoms associated with dysautonomia. But we could also have things like cancer. We could have ongoing gut issues that you keep treating and you keep treating and you keep treating, but you just can't get better. And so a lot of times this is where this biology of trauma begins to reveal itself, where it has not been addressed. It has not been discharged. And so we have these physiological changes that are occurring that are changing ultimately our biology. It's affecting how our physical being is able to keep going and deal with life stressors. Additionally, we also want to factor in the fascial aspect of our physical response to trauma is that when we have experienced any kind of trauma and to each person that may look very, very different because we're looking at it through our own lens. We're looking at it through our belief system, our values, how our biases. So two people could be exposed to the same exact thing and have completely different responses based on all the things that I've just mentioned. When we think about fascia, think of this as our 3D network that is surrounding our organs and our muscles, and it's like the glue that holds us all together. And it's also our force transmission system. But when we have these patterns of trauma, whether that's physical trauma or emotional trauma, we can ultimately affect all of this information that's going up to the brain. In our fascia, we have so many more interoceptors than we do proprioceptors. Interoceptors are essentially these receptors that are giving us this internal awareness of self. So are we hungry? Are we in pain? How is our heart beating? Is it fast or slow? How are we breathing? So information that's this of our internal environment that's constantly signaling to the brain. These cues are constantly going into the insular cortex of the brain. And this is ultimately one other major aspect in how we can hold these patterns in our body. The example that I'll give is that if you ever had a scar, so a C-section scar or a thyroid, tracheotomy, any kind of scar, port scar, it doesn't anything that that's on your body that scar is essentially fascia it's we have collagen fibers that are normally like this and then they begin to have these these cross links so it makes the tissue really strong but not as elastic and so when we begin to address these scars because there's so many nerve endings in the scars we can sometimes have an emotional release because that scar is tied to so many things it's tied to our physical tissue it's tied to perhaps the traumatic event that happened as it relates to surgery or a a fall or some kind of injury so a lot of times you can have a huge emotional release from beginning to work on a scar and so that gives us so much insight into how our fascia, how our tissue is influencing our emotions. And so when we take all of this information, there is a path to healing your body physically and emotionally. So how can you heal your body? Number one is you want to address your health conditions. This might sound counterintuitive. You thought that I was going to say address the trauma first. But when you have, when your body just can't go anymore, and so you are completely depleted, so that might be nutrient depleted, your magnesium, for example, the more stress we're under, the more magnesium we're depleting, zinc, things that are really important for overall function. We need to address these physical issues. If there's gut issues like parasites, parasites or SIBO or leaky gut, it has to be addressed. If there's mitochondrial issues where you have chronic fatigue, chronic pain, and so on, all of these need to be addressed so that you can allow your body to process some of these emotions. You can allow your body the opportunity to feel safe again, because in that social engagement state, remember, we need to feel safe. We need to feel connected. When we have past traumas that are unresolved, that we haven't processed, we do not feel safe. We're in an emergency state. And so we need to address the physical issues too, to give ourselves the opportunity to be able to begin the journey of healing from trauma. Number two is a bottom-up approach. So we often think about our trauma and past emotions and dealing with emotions in general as a, a cognitive approach. So we are trying to can think in su- certain circumstances, we may be trying to talk ourselves out of feeling a certain way. And if you've ever tried to do that, you know how hard that is. So when we're thinking about a bottom-up approach is that we can think about somatics. So 
somatic ultimately means movement. And so when we're thinking about how to address that, there's lots of different practices that can begin to help you on your journey for that. But when we're thinking about somatics, we're thinking about utilizing the body. So I talked about the fascial tissue. One of the things that's really important is to move the body in a safe way, of course, and allow ourselves to discharge some of this energy, to process it, and to move through it quite literally. And we can use things like somatic experiencing. We can use dance movement therapy, which is actually, if we're thinking of the original somatic practice, dance movement therapy is is really the we'll say the, the founder, if you will. Um, and But somatic means movement. So that's where we're thinking somatic is we're doing a movement-based approach. And so for example, and you can check out some of my other videos on, on different exercises, but something as simple as, let's say, a butterfly hug. When you are um, bringing your arms over your chest here, you're interlacing your fingers, and you're just letting your your hands just rest gently on your chest. Even just that moment of feeling soothed, feeling, I heard him having a, a response, feeling soothed, feeling safe, feeling comforted, then beginning to just alternate, creating just a little bit of vibration in the body, a little bit of sensory information, and just allowing your body to settle in. And so we would want to stay there, whatever the exercise might be, and you can check out some of my app, is you want to stay there until you actually have a response. So a lot of times we we cut things too short. So we might do something, but we don't necessarily wait until our body is actually actually signaling to our nervous system that we are safe again. And so allow yourself that time and that gift of time to to be comforted, to be safe. If that's one minute, if that's three minutes, if that's five minutes, that's okay. Number three is to integrate everything together because we have to ensure that we're addressing the physical issues. We can't just say, oh, well, this physical health condition is caused by trauma. No, we need to look at the, the physical condition in and of itself and make sure that we're managing all the aspects of that from treating symptoms to addressing all of the underlying causes, but simultaneously working on this journey of learning how to regulate your nervous system, learning how this this the power of the autonomic nervous system is, you've, and you can check out all my videos on the vagus nerve, is that there's so many ways to look at how our nervous system is functioning and how it's regulating our autonomic functions or automatic or everything from our breathing to our heart rate to our to our digestion to our swallowing. And so when we can begin to address all of these things, we learn how to regulate our nervous system through the day to be able to bring ourselves back to a resilient zone so that any stressors that are coming, whether there's balls throwing at us really fast or there's just one here and there, that we are able to navigate it. And so that takes time and that takes practice and that takes really understanding your nervous system. Because if you really understand it, if you understand that you have a lot of control over your nervous system and then you have the power to choose to know what to do and when to do it and how to do it for you. And there is no one perfect path for each person. I teach a six-week vagus nerve course and I explain that there, although I provide lots of different exercises, ultimately you have to find what resonates with you. But know that when we can begin to address this from a movement-based approach, we can address the physical issues and understanding the relationship of your physical health conditions with trauma, then we can really begin to get you to heal your body and to live your best life and thrive. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, give it a like, give it a share, and of course, subscribe to our, our channel the movement paradigm for weekly tips on mindset nutrition and movement and don't forget to check out our app the movement paradigm we have lots of different options for vagus nerve exercises somatic you can get a seven day free trial and you can explore a lot of different options that can help you heal your body